St. Matthew's Gospel, the 18th chapter. I want to focus our attention on verses 18 through 20. If you don't have a Bible, please, man, please, sir, look on the screen. The scripture is provided for you. We have it, say, I have his word. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Help me preach. Look at a person by the temple and say, neighbor, Amen. you can change the culture of your generation. Let's pray. Father of heaven, again, we thank you for this time of sharing God with these your people. Father, as always, it is our sin. I pray that you will hide us behind the cross. Father, speak through our minds. Think through our vocal cords, Father, in Jesus' name. I'm sorry, Lord. Think through my mind. Speak through my lips. In Jesus' precious name. God, have your way today in this place. I pray, God, for the ears of the hearer. God, today, that they, they may hear it accurately what you have to say. And God, when it's all said and done, allow us to be doers of the word. Not just here is only. We praise you and thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. You may have your seat in the presence of our God. If you're taking notes or, or keeping up with us, this is our, our, third, our third installment of changing the culture of our community. Because as you are aware, it is our endeavor on this year to bring tangible change not only in this community, but in the communities where we live and in the places where we serve. Amen. How many of you all believe that it is the will of God for us to bring changes in the environments where we live? Amen. Listen, there are many of us, and I said last week, many of us spend a lot of our time, we are complaining about what's going on in our communities. We complain about what goes on in, uh, uh, on our jobs and in our environment. But many times, in the middle of our complaining, we never take the time to ask God the question, how can I bring change? Right. Now understand, children of God, change does not happen automatically. Right. I'll say that again. Change does not happen automatically. Change happens as you and I becomes the, become the extensions of God in the earth. Tell the person by said, you are an extension of God in the earth. Understand, family, you and I are the hands of God in the earth. When you look here at the text, Jesus said here, he says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Now notice what he did not say. He did not say the nations would come to you. Oh, I wish I got a thing in there. Yes, I said he did not say that all nations would come to you. Yes, and sometimes, and, 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 and I'm not coming against anyone's prayer, but understand when you pray the prayer and say, God, send them in, that is not scriptural. All right, all right. I'm going to say that again. When you pray and say, God, send them in, that's not a scriptural, a scriptural prayer. Right. But God has commanded you and I to go and get them and to compare on them to come. Hunt the person by the and say, it's our job to go get them and compel them to come. And I think you all, for too long, this is what has happened in Christendom, and that we have spent too much of our time praying that God will send people in. And every now and then you will get someone that may trickle in, but understand, you all, trickling in is not the plan of God. Understand wherever you are in the world, whether you're at the car wash, the laundromat, whether you're at home, whether you're at the job, that is your platform and that is a place where you and I can testify to someone of the goodness and the awesome power of God. Right. Let me ask you, how many of you all can testify that God has done something miraculous in your life? Oh, come on, everybody in here has a testimony of the goodness of God in some area of your lives. But the question is, how many of us are willing to share our faith? Ask the person by saying, are you willing to share your faith? Jesus said, if you be ashamed to own me before men, watch this now, he said, I'll be ashamed to own you before the Father. If I'm not 
sure about you, but I don't want Jesus, you all, being ashamed to own me. Amen. Because when I call him, I want him to be on stand, be on standby waiting to answer my prayer. How many of you all want God to answer your prayer when you call? Amen. Now listen, if you were in relationship with somebody, you would hate it for them to bring you someplace and then have you somewhere in the corner and don't introduce you to nobody. It is a clear indication that they really don't want anybody to know you with them. Let me just help you out. If somebody takes you someplace and they won't tell nobody that, that they're with you, I promise you they really don't want you there. And if I was you, if I only had bus fare, I would get a bus, get an Uber, I would get out of Dodge. Come on, somebody. Tell me now, you stay right here, I'll be back. And he's sitting over there, sitting in the corner fellowship and laughing. Here you are sitting there, I'm waiting my turn. Baby, there's something with you, baby, get out of there. Well, hear me, family, that's the same way God is. God does not want you and I to always come to him for things, always asking him for things. But when he gives us something simple as to go into all the world and teach all nations, what he's simply saying is that wherever you are, that's your platform to share his goodness. Because all of us can testify that God has done at least one good thing for us. Listen, if it's nothing, but he woke you up this morning, that's a good thing. Come on. If it's nothing, he kept your clothes in your right mind. That's a good thing. Come on. When you were asleep last night, somebody could have broke in. As a matter of fact, your house could have been on the hit list, but God did not let it be. Somebody say, that's a good thing. It's a good thing. And so he's given all of us all testimonies that something we can testify concerning his goodness. But if you and I don't tell anybody about the goodness of God, there are folks in your house who will die and go to hell because you are saying of Jesus. Come on, there are folks on your job who will die and go to hell because you won't share your faith. There are folks that you know that will miss the opportunity to know the Jesus you serve, the Jesus who brought you out, the one who delivered you. They will miss the opportunity to know that God if you don't share your faith. And so when I talk about you all changing the culture of a generation or a community, I'm talking about changing the landscape of our society. Come on, say, change the landscape of our society. Hear me, you all. I have lived long enough to remember when you could walk the street and you were not afraid of folks shooting you. Now, I know for our new millennials, you all probably have no clue of how it used to feel to walk the street and no one shooting you. But I mean, when we walked the street, if we heard a, 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 something loud go off, we automatically knew it was probably somebody playing with firecrackers. Right, but right. now you can't, you can't take a chance. Right. Come on, you hear somebody's car back fire, you, 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 wow, you duck it. Come on, let somebody put an in in some place and, 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 and light it. You're going to be hollering, oh, the blood of Jesus, baby, no. Because it's the landscape you are of our culture. And so if you and I are going to be agents of change and change our society, change starts with you. Right. Come on, because the change starts with me. Come on, say change starts with me. Now, here we are. This is going to be our focus on this year because really what God is saying that if we want to change our culture, it is time for you and I to begin to make disciples. Come on, class, say, make disciples. make disciples. Now, when you look at that word, disciple, in the Greek, the word disciple means discipline one. And one of the reasons, you all, our world is so messed up, because we have a whole lot of folk who are now running this earth that are not disciplined. Let me tell you what you might have seen today in the news. Your, our president is not disciplined. Now, you were saying, Pastor, you shouldn't say that. He did it. Come on, no one in that office should be putting that kind of foolishness out there. Amen. You should be disciplined. Well, hear me, family, a disciple of Jesus Christ simply says, I am a disciplined one that no matter what obstacle that I am facing, I am disciplined enough to understand that if I am on the side of God, then even though storms may blow in my life, I have the discipline to keep my trust in God. Amen. How many folks can testify that we're living in a time right now that you and I need to know how to keep our trust in God? 
all of you, and that's amazing thing. Keep your trust in God. And so here we go. This will be our, our, our thought process for the year. To not just get them saved, but once we get them saved, get them in the house of God, to grow them, to train them up, so that they too can go and rescue someone else from the penalty of sin. Amen. Let me ask you, aren't you glad that God sent someone in your life to rescue you from the penalty of sin? The Bible said, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, come on, is eternal life. Simply saying this, death, it means eternal separation from God. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to live one moment separated from God. Amen. Are you hearing me today? And so that's our clarion call to the kingdom, you all, that all of us know someone who needs to know our Lord. Because see, watch this. When you rescue someone from the clutches of the devil, that person now has the opportunity to go back and impact the area from which they came. You understand the girl who was, uh, the girl who was, who was at the well? The Bible says she was at the well. And here comes Jesus. Now, the Bible said he had need to go through Samaria. Uh -huh. Now, understand, Jesus, you all could have took a whole different route, but in his spirit, he knew that there was someone at the well who was going to get water, but what she, what she didn't need was water. She needed some living water. Right. And here she is now in the middle of the day, the hot part of the day, because the girl had a bad reputation. Yes, Come on, anybody know if you folks have got a bad reputation? And so the reason this girl would go out in the heat, the hot part of the day, is because everybody knew her business, and she didn't want to be embarrassed. But see, it's amazing that the same person who was embarrassed about their past, Jesus looked over her past and met her where she was. Doctor, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say this. There are some folks that we know, well, I'm sorry, maybe the person by you has a past. Oh, look at y'all looking real fucking fine. Look at the person making the I, You got one, you got one. Come on, you were, you didn't get the same. Come on. Everybody in here got a pass. But what the genius wall had the capacity to look past her past and meet her where she was. What would happen, you all, in our world if you would learn to meet people where they are? You can't confront folk with your holding them down attitude. Sometimes you have to meet them where they are. Come on, somebody. You can't go to folks speaking in tongues and prophesying and singing all. You gotta just be yourself and just try saying, Hello, how you doing? Come on, somebody. Glory to God. But watch this. She just says, He told Peter, He said, Peter, I pray that your faith fail you not. But he says, When you are converted, watch it now. He says, Go and strengthen your brother. Come on, say, strengthen my brother. In other words, when God delivers you, your job is to go and find someone else that you know has a struggle and now bring them into the same deliverance that God has brought you. Listen, I'm not, I know that I know somebody who is struggling right now with the issues I used to be in. Oh, don't look at me funny. Because a, a whole bunch of y'all... God just got you out last week. <laughs> and so your job is once you are sure that you are free, and I use the word once you are sure that you're free. Because there's some places you should not, you cannot go back until you know you're free. Come on, you can't be free today. Come on, man. I'm going back to the strip club. You better not go over there. Come on, you just got just got free last, last night over alcohol. You're going back to the club. I'm going to get all my boys saved. And you come on now. Come on. There's some places you can't go revisit until you know you're free. Maybe it's just me in my house. Come on. There's some days you and I have to cut loose until we know we are free. But once you know that you are free from that thing, that person, that issue, go and find someone else you know that's struggling with the very same thing and tell them how to get free. You see, see watch this. If I was sick with something and someone has gone through the same thing I, that I'm struggling with, that's the one who has the information. 
Hey, hear me. That's the one who knows the way out. There's some of you that God has allowed you to go through some things so you can be a help to somebody else. Amen. You see, when God allows you and I to go through a period, a season, where we are sick, and then he delivers us, he heals us, there is somebody else who is going to be sick with the very same thing you were sick from. And since God brought you out, and the Bible said that God is no respecter of person, it simply says, if God can bring me out, then I know he'll bring you out. Oh, when you tell the person, I say, he'll bring you out. And so then, family, since we know then that God is able to deliver, he's able to heal, and he's able to set free, it is then our job to go and find someone who is in the grip, in the clutches of the enemy, and make sure they get free. You see, one of the worst things, you all, that we can do is have someone in our families, in our households. We know their struggle, but because we're too familiar with them, we let them stay in the struggle. Come on, how many of y'all love somebody in your family? Now, I know y'all, I know some of y'all struggling with folks in your family. We all have, we all have, we all have, we all. We all. We all got some. Let me see if I can say it like this. I want to say it right. We all got some, some. No, I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that. Well, I feel some crazy folk in your family. Come on, everybody in here got some folks in their family that struggle with some crazy issues. Maybe it's just the folks in my family. But watch this, you don't want to see the folks in your family struggling going through life with an issue, Mr. Anderson, and here it is, you're the carrier of the answer. Come on, you are saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, prophesying in the mirror every day to yourself, but you see folks in your house and you won't even tell them that I serve a God that's able to free you from the hand of the enemy. Come on, listen. Just because Junebug is struggling on drugs don't mean you point your finger in his face. What you should do is get up in his face and say, man, I don't care how much you are struggling, I still love you in spite of all your struggles. You may be acting a fool, you may be stealing money, you may be smoking dope, but I love you. As a matter of fact, my mission is to love the hell out of you. Oh, you ain't talking back to me. See, many times we are we are so busy putting our fingers in people's faces and telling them what they're doing. Let me encourage you. They already know what they're doing. Don't keep in mind the folk of their mess. They already know their mess. But when I show you a way out of the mess, come on, anybody glad God showed you a way out of your mess? Man, if there's anybody that don't point their finger at you, I'm glad it's my God. God never points the finger at me, but when God identifies an issue in my life, it's only to show me I can get you out. Woo! Somebody who can go out the class, say, God will bring you out. Y'all come on, get the preacher and say, God will. He will bring you out. That's the how do you know he brought me out. Oh, is there anybody in the house that can testify that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly of all we can ask or think according to the power that's working on the inside? Somebody shout, he'll bring you out. See, our problem, y'all, in Christendom is this, Mr. Mary, we spend more time disqualifying folk than helping them. I said we spend more time disqualifying people than helping people. That's the way you're saying. Watch this. What would have happened if God disqualified me? Think about it. Everybody in here know David's faults. If I say David, the first person you would say is Bathsheba. Somebody help me out. Why do we always identify people's issues instead of looking for something good inside of them? I have been I have lived long enough to understand that you cannot identify people by their issue. Watch this, watch this. You recall in the Bible when uh, this man was sitting by the roadside begging, what was his name? See, how about this? You said blind first though. I want this. I ain't say a word. You said blind Bartimaeus. Why in the world did you have to say blind first? I'm sure his mother didn't call him blind. Come here, blind. Come here. 
See, Marcus, I learned that sometimes people who are always angry, anybody who, 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 who always angry, watch this, everybody that's angry is not always angry at you. See, watch this, some folks have had things happen in their past that they can't talk about. Oh, come on. Anybody besides me has some stuff happen in your past that you want to talk about but couldn't find nobody around you who can who could tell and they would keep your secret? Oh, come on, maybe it's just your pastor. I've learned I can't tell everybody my stuff. But some folk can't hold water in a cup or a bucket. And sometimes because people are, because of the thing they go through that you are aware of and they can't tell you and now all that anger is built up on the inside and it has to go out someplace and just so happened you came along. And you're saying he or she is me and they're saying help me. Somebody please hear me. Somebody help me with my issue. I'm going through, I've gone through some struggle. I've been in some pain. My heart has been broken. I've been abused as a child. I've been abused as an adult. I've been going through, and there's nobody I can tell my pain. See what the, the Bible says to confess your faults one to another. Yes. That ye may be healed. And while that's true, the question is, who can I tell? Because see, Sister, Sister Curry, in church, we all put on our church face. Praise the Lord. How are you? Oh, I am blessed and highly favored. And we all come off as though we have never gone through nothing. But I wonder what would we see if God would take the cover off our lives and expose everything we've done, every place we've been, all the folks that are in our lives, and if God would pull the cover off, what would people really see? Anybody beside me, let God keep the cover on. Woo! I'm glad God does it. I'm glad God is. Oh, y'all will leave this church if y'all only knew. Would that girl say, if only you knew, oh, y'all be going with the wind. Oh, if you knew what God brought me from, y'all be saying, well, I can't hang. The problem is, you've been in the same place too. Come on. And so why others disqualify you, why does no one is in position to disqualify nobody I'm going to preach something, preach. I'm going to say it again. Nobody is in position to disqualify anybody from being in the presence of God. I'm amazed how God can love us in all of our foolishness and all of our stupor, and he still loves us. In all our backbiting and bad talking, he still loves me. And I'm living wrong, I'm thinking wrong, I'm acting wrong, he still loves me. Ain't that anybody in the house who's living God? The folks that know 
those who know where I've been don't control where I'm going. Oh, that everybody, that, that the folk who know the stuff you've been in, that they don't control your destiny. I serve a God that justified me and when other folk disqualify me. God said, I'm the one who put you there and you are there because I have placed you in that place. Would you step your neighbor and just tell a neighbor, God is the one that justifies me. God is the one
going to see you and they haven't seen you in, in, in a few weeks. And you come out with some, you know, out your back. The, the folks say, you ain't changed. Come on. Or do they say there's something about you that's different? Are you following me? Now, when you look over here and ask the first chapter, I want to show you something you about a man who needed a, his paradigm to be shifted. Read the story because I, I've been ill, more in depth into it next week. But here there is a man, you all, who laid at the gate daily. Now watch this. Even the Bible spent more time identifying Brother Eric his issue because in the text, it doesn't give him a name. The Bible says, the lame man, a certain lame man. Now, I know his mama didn't call him lame man. Come here, lame man. Eat your cereal, lame man. Come on, lame man. Clean up your room, lame man. But watch this. We see you all, even in the scripture, this young man is identified by his issue. But watch this. I want to deal with the lesson today, or at least part of it, from his perspective. All right, all right. Because before you can comment on what I did or my issue, have to live it through my eyes or say it through my eyes. Yeah, right. This is why, why, why I, I never spend time judging what someone does. Right. Now, what you have done may be wrong. It may be deserving of time in prison or time someplace where you can't bother anybody else, but it does not suggest by any means that you are a bad person by nature. Right. Now watch this. In the text, watch this now. It's not funny. Oh, I want to I, I point out five things in this text. Five things I want to show you in the text. The first thing in the text I want to show you is the problem of the man. Come on, class. Say the problem, the problem. of the man. The second thing I want to show you is the priority of the man. Come on, say priority of the man. The third thing I want to show you is the promise of the man. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The first thing is the, the problem of the man. Number two is the priority of the man. Number three is the priority is the man. Number four is the promise of the man. Number five is the progress of the progress in the man. Now, what is the main thing you heard of everything I said? What you heard me deal with is what? The man. God loves men. Now, women, don't get into my pastor, pastor, but I'm a girl. God loves mankind. Come on, say God loves me. In this text, I want, I want to show to you from this man's perspective. Because while he was laying at the gate, I'm going to show you all in the text, the Bible says, this man was laying there at the gate daily. Which means, watch this now, he was at the church, but no one in the church could help him with his issue. It's a bad thing. Watch, did you come to church? We come to God's house, and we suffer with issues. The house of God is the one place I should be able to come and get deliverance. Amen. Come on. Amen. If I come to God's house and I struggle with self-esteem, I shouldn't come to God's house and someone identify my low self-esteem. Right. Right. Pastor, what do you mean? Don't make me think I'm nothing because you have a degree and I don't have one. It does not suggest right. that I am lesser than you. Come on, you can have more degrees than a thermometer. It does not mean you're better than anybody else. Are you hearing me? Watch this. Money does not make you smart. Don't believe it? Ask our president. Come on, somebody. Now, I'm not bashing the president. Bible says the president in authority. I pay for that man every day because watch this. He can do one stupid thing and get all of us killed. Come on, I pray God keep his mind or give his finger out the right. He's the one. Come on, don't push the wrong button and get me killed over your foolishness. Come on, somebody. 
and so he yes, pray for that man. You ain't got the last one to pray for him, pray for him anyway. Right here. But watch this. When we look here, you all, at this man, this man, none of us really know what this man is going through. None of us understand how his personal self-esteem could have been shattered. Imagine every day, the Bible says someone, Pastor March, laid him at the gate. Here it is, I'm at the gate. <clears throat> My first question was, why did they lay him at the gate and not bring him in the jail? Okay, I'm coming down the road. People we know, we, we give them our address to where we are, but do we bring them in the temple? All right. All right. We tell them who our pastor is, but do we bring them in the temple? Watch this. If they go to the boat, they make sure they come get you. Okay, okay. All my, all my, all my, all my, all my ex-clubbers, all my ex-clubbers. When you were going to party in the middle of the weekend, how many of y'all got a ride with somebody to go party? Rest of y'all lying in church. Come on. When y'all was going to get high, you almost never got high by yourself. And let's give your last joint. Got one amen and one and one pastor stay out of my business. <laughs> Come on. I mean, you were going to do things, you would do the thing. Listen, y'all. Okay. But I was going to the club. Mama's going to like the club. Yeah, girl, I was in the club. I love to dance. But watch this. I never went by myself. That's right. That's right. Come on. Listen, I told y'all, your pastor was a prolific stepper. I will shut you down. I'm telling the truth. Can't tell the truth on me. I will shut you down. Make you take your shoes off. And you will stop dancing. Come on. Give me something, baby. Give me something. Give me something. Shut you down. Shut you down. Come on. I could win a step contest. Come on, somebody. But watch this. I would not go by myself. Even if the person I was going with, if I didn't like her, if she could step, I would call her up. Say, it's a contest going on at the club. Let's go tonight and win some money. Come on. Now watch this. If I can invite other folk to do the wrong thing. Come on. Okay, okay. All my, all my, all my ex drinkers, all my ex drinkers. How many of y'all, you, I mean, how many? Who here, who here, who here, who here? Who I'm moving on, I'm moving on. But watch this. There's some things it is better when you do it with somebody else. Right? And so watch this. You, you didn't mind calling someone else. Knowing how wrong, see, see, y'all, boy, thank y'all, we, we, have, we, have, we have yesterday, boy. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to tell the truth, I'm going to tell the truth, I am. You know you have fun because you are with someone else. Now watch this. Here it is, a man who was late. They brought him and didn't bring him in the church. They only brought him to the gates. There are some of us who are telling people about the church, but won't tell them about our God. Come on, we tell folk what God can do, but never tell them about what God has done for us. Here we have the reason God gives you and I a testimony is so that we can share it and help free someone else's life. See, there's someone in this room right now who has been on drugs or maybe, maybe be on drugs right now. But the reason they can't tell you is because they're afraid that you might condemn them for where they are right now. But if you tell them, maybe I know you, you know, folks who have been on drugs, they know folk who on drugs. I'm going to tell you why I tell my girls, if you got some dude that you ain't sure about, bring him to me. Because, listen, I can't tell it. I can't tell it. But game, no game. Come on. Give me 
see three men I can tell you but he's a good man or or or, or a throwback. See some of y'all got some throwbacks. Pastor, what's a throwback? He comes fitting garbage, throw him back. Come on, he got a job, throw him back. Come on, he got four or five big mamas, throw him back. Come on. He did it at home with his mama, throw him. Why are you telling me? Throw him back. If he can't take care of him, throw him back. Oh, since I'm here, if he can't take care of himself, he can't take care of you, baby. Come on. You want to preach to that girl? Oh, let's preach this girl. I'm going to cook my sermon today. Watch this, y'all. Here is this man, Charlotte, with an issue. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to stop. Give me some stuff in this. That means pass the stop. Because I want to really get into the lesson, and I'll get into it deeper on next week. Is that all right? Yeah. But I want to say this, y'all. Here's a man that every day he was brought here to the game. I challenge you all to read Acts, the third chapter. Read it. Read it. Read it. Because this way, when I get into it, you can see what Pastor is going with this. But this man was brought to the temple every day. And watch this, watch this, watch this. Brother Eric, every day folk pass by. Folks pass by. Walking in, walking out. Walking in, walking out. Walking in, walking out. Question, how many of you all are walking past hurting people every day of your life? Walking past people who are hurting every day. And watch this. We are too busy to stop and assist someone who's hurting. Anybody believe that God sent somebody to you when you were in a crisis? See, you know what, y'all? One thing I know about God is that sometimes your life will be in a crisis and God will send somebody or something with the right word just for you. Come on. Anybody ever engaged somebody in conversation and they didn't know what you were going through, but they said the right thing? And while they thought it was conversation, it was uplifting you. Somebody, come on. They thought they were engaging in trivial conversation, but they didn't realize that what they were saying was helping your psyche. Come on, they were help pulling you back from where you were. And so they encourage you when you see people. Just because they're having a, 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 a crisis that you can identify. The question is not what is the issue. The question is, how can I assist? You were saying, Pastor, but I don't have the money to assist. Every assistance is not about money. Because you will find out in the text, this man was there to get money, but he, had, he still had the issue. Are you hearing me? And until, see what says, y'all, oh God, I'm going to say it to this people. I'm going to say it now. We can't wait for our government to fix a problem that is spiritual. I said we cannot wait for our government to fix a spiritual problem. A spiritual problem can only be addressed while this by spiritual people. Come on. The Bible says, those of you who are spiritual, restore such a one. In other words, when someone has, has, has gone down because you are spiritual, that simply means that I have the spirit of God on the inside. God says your job is to restore them in the spirit of meekness. In other words, don't don't be there with your finger. I know you, you ain't no good. You go down through the dog. What if God put his finger in your face like that? Come on. I worked in something all 14 years and I've seen guys locked up in jail who made one bad mistake. Come on, made one bad decision at the wrong time. And when you talk to them, they're not bad people. Come on. They just made bad decisions. Watch this. Just for you know the person, 
You ain't the only one here who made a bad decision. How many folk besides your pastor ever made a bad decision? Come on. Everybody in here has made a bad decision. Okay, I will come down the road. Some of us are a product of a bad decision. Now, come on. I know everybody in here, your mama and daddy didn't, didn't plan you. Some of y'all were like, oops, there it is. Oops, there it is. Come on. <laughs> come on. They were jamming in the back of the sun roof top. They were saying, hey, we're in. Woo -hoo. Then after four weeks, guess what? <laughs> come on, somebody. But watch this. Even, watch this, even in that mistake, though, even in that oops, God had a plan. Come on. Look, y'all. Mama had eight kids. I'm the only one she planned. That's all. But Sean, that's my testimony. It can't none of me wrong. I'm just saying. <laughs> Glory to God. But Eric, they can't prove me wrong. That's right. Pick them up. Pick them up. You want to pray? Come on, pray then. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Okay. Maybe two of us she plans. But anyway. But here's my point. None of you, listen, hear me, I'm done. None of you are by mistake. None of you are by accident. Because how you know? God and his infinite wisdom. God had you already planned to get here before you got here. I have the million competitors you had swimming against you. God let you hit the end. Come on. Come on. God let you get here. And because you're here, God says, there is a divine purpose for your life. Yes. Come on, help me preach and tell a person by saying, there is a divine purpose yes. for your life. Yes. Come on, maybe the person you told didn't receive it. Come on, tell somebody who can believe you. Say, there is a divine purpose yes. for your life. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. There is a divine purpose for your life. See, you all, the girl, the girl at the well. Watch this, now I promise you my last close. The girl at the well who ran into Jesus, or Jesus ran into her, here she was just trying to draw water out the well. And when she had an encounter with Jesus, watch this now. Once she had the encounter with Jesus, she went back to where she came from. And she told all the folks that knew her before her encounter. And she said, come see your man. She said, listen, you got to go and see somebody who just touched me. Watch this. Who touched me when no one else has been touched. She yeah, some of you all are waiting for a physical touch. Now, I won't bother because I won't condemn it because you are made for touch. Right. Pastor, how you know? When God made the man, watch this. God, he spoke everything into being. But when it came to the man, he touched him. Right. And he formed the man. And so you were made to be touched, but watch this though, more than being touched physically, let God touch you spiritually. Right. Amen, somebody, because watch this, when God touches you, watch this, when God hits you in the right spot, you will crave his touch more than anyone else's touch. And many of us are running after a physical when God says, just run to me. Because when you run to me, God says, I won't turn you away. And you are crying because you've been rejected by people. But sometimes God has to close the door to make you see him. Come on, God has to make folk reject you so you will run to him. The only reason you're lonely is because you have not yet made God the person you run to. Come on, class. And I guarantee you, as you run to God, now you may have moments of, of bouts of loneliness. But I guarantee you, when you start talking to God, and when God starts talking back to you, woo, anybody ever had God talk back to you? You say, God don't talk back to you. Baby, try talking to him. Try talking to him. In the midst of all your tears, you'll hear God talking to you. Why are you crying? 
he says, don't worry, I still love you. Yeah. While you're in pain, God says, I'm right here. Yeah. Come on, when the money just fucking changes, just bring God says, don't worry, I got you, baby, I got you, I got you. Anybody ever had God tell you, I got you, I got you. And so you all, here's our job. Our job is to make sure that you and I will impact this world for the kingdom of God. In our homes, in this community, wherever you are, wherever you serve, at your job, at the grocery store, Come on, why you buying cigarettes? Share Jesus. Amen. Why you buying lottery tickets? Share Jesus. <laughs> you were saying, Pastor, how I want to do that? One of them got to go. Come on. One of them have to go. Consider this. What if you were in line? If you were in line behind me, and here's this pastor buying a, 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 a carton of Carton of cools. The cools still out? Yeah. 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 Cools still out? Okay. I got one. Yeah. Okay. You would say, y'all, is it, Pastor really saved? Oh, some cigarettes. Watch this. Smoking don't send you to hell? No, it doesn't. I'm going to that again. Smoking won't send you to hell? No, it might send you to an early grave. But you won't go to hell over smoking cigarettes. Come on, somebody. Our job, you all, is to touch the people. God loves everybody. Yes, One thing, y'all, God loves sinners. Yes, I'm going to say it again. God loves the sinner. Yes, but he hates sin. Yes, Come on, class. And so listen, y'all. Let's do more than talk about them and point to their problem. Let's be the solution to the problem. And my time is all gone. Give Jesus a hand. Praise him. Amen. Are you all blessed today?